You demanded my entire team be at the office for the 4th of July. Fine, enjoy paying for the office party, posted by the Lightning Count 1. So this starts on a Monday, the 13th, as I receive an email from a VP not over my department, or bad VP. I'm told that my team will be required on the 4th. Well, I politely tell them that no, our team has been scheduled this day off and people already have plans. My team is the IT team and, as many of you know, IT team gets, well, shafted every time that it can get shafted by, well, any company. So over the course of the week, I let my team know what's happening. I let them know that I've been reaching out to higher ups to fix it, and I also tell them that if their plans are ruined, I'll make it right at work. Over the course of three meetings, it starts to look like things will not go my way. In response, I send an email to the CEO of the company. All of my higher ups know that I was going to do this and said that I should do this as he is very family oriented and that he would not allow anyone to work on a national holiday. Well, he's on vacation in the Bahamas until the 6th, but his assistant informed me that he would look at this after he gets back. I repeatedly slam my head into the desk. So I tell everyone that it'll be work from home and that we'll be setting my cell phone as priority in the call routing, meaning that I would get most of the calls. To be honest, well, I was expecting almost zero calls, especially since I was asked to send out a notification that IT support would cover the 4th of July. I never sent that email out. A day later, I was given another outrage. I was told in an email that my employees would be required to be at the office and no one was allowed to work from home. They would be checking the door badge ins to verify that we were at the office. I asked why in an email and they said that they wanted to make sure no one was playing video games at work. We normally work from home about two thirds of the week and video game playing is a normal occurrence at work. So I walked into the person's office and after a very long conversation where she was losing the logic war with me, she told me that it's just IT, you guys don't even have lives. No, I'm not kidding you, that's exactly what they told me. I reported this to my VP who said, I'll take care of this, it likely won't be until after the 4th, so get creative. I know this man well. We have worked together for a long time and get creative is code word for corporate screwery. I asked the person requiring us to be at the office if they cared if we had an office party. They said no, as long as it didn't interfere with the call flow. Even suggested using my new company card to pay for it. Go wild. Pro tip, never tell me to go wild. At this point, it was Tuesday the 21st. I let everyone know what's up, but then I have something planned. I asked who had things planned for that day, and two people told me that they were planning to shoot off fireworks with their family, but the rest were planning barbecues with friends. I write up an email to the VP over my department and the bad VP. I tell them all that I had let everyone know. We all were expected to work until 8 p.m. on Monday. Per the conversation with the bad VP, I'll be having an office party as sort of a sorry to the guys and the gals who got shafted by this decision. The bad VP replied again, thank you for your understanding. Also, yes, I would expect an office party if I had to work on the 4th of July as well. So go wild and enjoy your time. Use your new company credit card if you need to cover a few expenses. Also, I should not have to remind you or anyone else. No fireworks or alcohol on company property. So now it's time to tell you about my office. See, a while back, the IT team was moved from the main corp office and into a smaller building by itself. It has a nice gaming break room, a decent sized gym, and a full on drink bar. Soft drinks, mind you, no alcohol at work. Out back is a big patio that crosses county lines as soon as you cross a small creek. A creek that just so happens to have a footbridge over it, leading to an empty field. I start making phone calls. Monday, June the 25th. I call up everyone into an hour early meeting that morning and I explain to them all that I will be making it right. I ask everyone to invite their friends and the family to the office. No supplies will need to be brought by anyone. Now I tell them all that this will be non-alcoholic, but that I will be planning something for everyone. I told them to expect all food to be provided and they don't need to bring anything unless they want to bring some fireworks, i.e. they won't have to spend a dime. The fourth comes and the entire day we did absolutely no work. No tickets, no calls came in. Well, seven calls did come in, but from the same person, the bad VP. She was calling to make sure we were manning the phones. All of us were playing video games or watching movies. 6 p.m. rolls around and everyone was told that the food was ready. 
People were expecting hot dogs, hamburgers, maybe a bratwurst or two, and what they got was a full-on barbecue feast with pizza and other foods. There was smoked brisket, spare ribs, smoked sausage, smoked turkey, both kinds of tater salad, coleslaw, green beans with bacon and onion, potatoes au gratin, pizza from two different places, excellent hamburgers, and bratwurst hot dogs. On the dessert side was cake, very good cookies, four different kinds of pies, and about two pounds of fudge. Families and friends started showing up at around 6, 6.15ish. Some brought alcohol, but I told them that they would need to leave that in their cars as I was not <laughs> that crazy. Some were not too happy about that, but agreed as it was a free dinner for random strangers. So let me set the scene for you. I'm out there with all the calls routed to my cell phone and everyone just having a good time. We have a ton of people that are just there enjoying the fun night, chatting about random stuff, eating the food, and occasionally lighting off some sparklers or throwing firecrackers into the stream. It's not stocked and it's only like one foot deep. My VP, not the bad VP mind you, showed up with his family, brought some water balloons for the kids and man children. Around 8.30ish, it's getting dark and people want to shoot off more than the simple sparklers and the firecrackers that we'd been using. The VP over the IT department had everyone cross the footbridge, over county line, and off company property, mind you, and we set up a big wooden board using it as our launch pad. We fired off what we had for about an hour or two and sort of just hung out for a little while. At around this time, people were tired and ready to head home. I told people, just take home leftovers, within reason. We all clocked out at around 8 and no one left until about 10.30. The bad VP did call once more while we were out back at the party, and it was 7.50 and she called asking for a status update. My exact words were, Well, you were the only one to call us today. The rest of us are on the back patio enjoying the 4th of July shindig. She simply acted like my boss and said, As long as no alcohol or fireworks are on company property, I do not care. We ate roughly half of the food catered. The rest was taken home. A small group volunteered to stay behind to clean up, including my VP. We had a funny conversation about how this is going to make waves with the bosses, but he said that he had my back and asked me how much this cost. I just gave him a sideways look, which made him laugh. Tuesday morning, I submitted the expense report to my VP. This email would inevitably make its way over to the bad VP and up the chain to the CIO of the company. It would be a bad idea to give out the exact cost of the party, mind you, but I can tell you that because of this 4th of July party, new rules were put into place. Any expenses of over $4,000 or more must be approved by the direct supervisor, VP over the department, and the full expense report must be sent to the financial department for review after the fact. Hint, the party cost over $6,000. The barbecue was the most expensive part. I didn't order from like a low or a mid-tier place because the place that I ordered from has consistently been on top 10 in the DFW listing for the last 30 years. I ate at that place so much that I made friends with the owner, the best barbecue that I have ever had. The pies and the cakes were custom made by a bakery and the cookies were made by a boutique cookie place. I had like 10, 12 packs of Coke, Coke Zero, Dr. Pepper, Dr. Pepper Zero, Pepsi, Pepsi Zero. I bought five pepperoni, five sausage, five cheese, two Hawaiian and three cheeseburger pizzas from one place and nearly the same number from another place. Excluding the cheeseburger ones, I subbed out those for a different specialty pizza from the other place. The burgers were from an excellent burger place that did catering. I know that owner well. He brought his kids for the night of fun after he'd heard what was going to be happening, and he was also the one who brought the brat dogs as he recently added those to his menu. This was the most expensive office party in the history of the company. The only things more expensive than this were some business meetings that the CEO rented private rooms in high-end restaurants for. As for the CEO, he was outraged. Not at the cost of the party, mind you. He knew the party would not have been necessary if people had been allowed to go home. He was outraged that IT was the only group required to work on that day. When I submitted the log showing how we received no real phone calls, no service requests, and that we basically watched movies and played video games during our shift, he'd heard enough. He apparently sent out a scathing email about work-life balance and the importance of our holidays to every upper management. It's kind of funny as people wanted me to get in trouble for what I did, but the reality is other departments have done similar things in the past, just not on the scale that IT did. The bad VP was admonished quite effectively and sent me an apology email. 
I forwarded it to the team with a strong hint to not reply. Then my VP let the CIO and the CEO know about what the bad VP said. You guys don't have lives. The bad VP did actually confirm that she said it in a meeting with her EVP. <laughs> it did not go over well. I've never heard people yelling in an office meeting like that before. I mean, the CEO of the company came to our office and yelled at her. I'm not sure if she was fired, but she is not at work today. In an active directory, she does not have the down arrow of death, so not 100% of what happened to her. I know that she lost whatever clout she had at this company with her attitude. If anything more happens, I will update. But so far, it looks like the fallout from this is that I caused a new rule to be put into place about how much you're allowed to spend at one time. The bad VP may or may not be let go or forced to resign, but I know she got yelled at. Strangely, there is now no longer any pushback for my bid to get everyone back to working from home. Oh, you know, this is not just one of those by the books malicious compliances. No, nay, it is not. It is, hey, you can have a party if you want to. Oh, you want me to spend as much as I want to? Thousands of dollars over six grand, causing a new rule to be put into place. This did not just have a huge party that impacted the company. It actually changed the policy and the future of the rules of the company from this one incident, all because they wanted them to work. They knew that, hey, this is not the best idea for the company. They were forced to do it anyway, and they maliciously complied to make this party happen. Way to go, OP. $6,000 in all. I destroyed my boss, Karen, after I got promoted. Click the video on your screen so you don't miss this awesome story, and I'll see you there.